University of North Dakota uniquely was founded uh, in 1883 as the first public university in the Dakota Territory. That's six years before North Dakota became a state. Now, the Illinois Association was founded back with the very early graduates. Those few alumni back in those early days, the few graduates in those classes, they got together and said, let's have an alumni association. We had folks who stepped forward, uh, graduates, and said, we want to we wanna stay connected with the university. I often think of those first six women and two men who graduated from the University of North Dakota and what their determination, their hard work, their passion had to be, and what the overriding love for the institution must have been like. Because they got together right after graduation and they formed the Alumni Association, determining that they wanted to stay connected with each other, connected with their university, and support their university in any way possible. What a true passion and love for this institution. I am constantly amazed by the University of North Dakota alumni. They could leave here 40 years ago, and when you meet them and talk to them, it's like they were back on campus yesterday. They're special. They have this joy, this love for the University of North Dakota and the state of North Dakota in many cases. These people truly are special and I look forward to meeting them and walking those campus paths with them when they return to UND. We are so fortunate to have this university and we must continue to support and strengthen it. University of North Dakota means the world to me. It's opened up so many opportunities for myself. The University of North Dakota, quite simply, I think is world class. I am so proud of the University of North Dakota. I am so proud of the people. Quite simply, UND has been good to me and good for me. Thank you so much for this award. The Sioux Award is an honor and tradition that goes back to 1949. And this very distinguished award has an amazing history of people who have received it political leaders of our state and our country, outstanding business leaders from across the world, teachers, lawyers, engineers, nurses, doctors who have changed lives every day. And yet, they see it as just what they should do. The University of North Dakota prepared me well to accept the world as an interesting place to be. UND sent me out of here, I think, able to compete and beat most folks from the East Coast and the West Coast, which I guess I wasn't quite aware of until I uh, had the opportunity to do it. The University of North Dakota, I thank you. And I thank you, and I thank you again for mentoring me so I could help others in their time of need. UND truly is the foundation that, that I built my career on. I have found that our Sioux Award recipients are overwhelmed by this distinguished honor. And I would say that we are humbled by their modesty and definitely in awe of their achievements. And I pledge to you that in return for this for sure undeserved but very highly treasured reward of the Sioux Award that I will dedicate myself to do my part to make sure that the students who load up their worldly possessions and head to the University of North Dakota will leave here equipped not with a wild imagination but with the determination to reach for realistic dreams. God bless you and the University of North Dakota and may the goodness of UND stay with you always. The Sioux Award uh, stands as a real life example of um, what one life can mean for the benefit of others.
And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Deanna Carlson Zink, CEO of the University of North Dakota Alumni Association and Foundation. Thank you. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the 2014 Sioux Awards, a celebration of the achievements of some of our finest alumni. Before I go any further, though, I do have to give one shout out to Mr. Earl Strinden, who was in our video. This is the first Sioux Award in many, many, many years that my mentor and the reason I'm here has not attended the Sioux Awards. Um, Earl had open heart surgery a few weeks ago and he is home, he's resting. Um, his son Tom had called us to let us know and he said, well, Earl was doing his own stress test. He was out chopping wood at the lake. True story for all of you who have heard the woodpile story. So um, if you see him or give him a call or drop him an email, tell him we were thinking about him tonight. So tonight, we are here to honor a special brand of UND alumni, those who have built successful careers on the educational foundation established during their time on campus and who have used their talent, their time, and their treasure to truly better their communities and our university. We celebrate the spirit of our honorees at the UND Alumni Association's most prestigious evening of the year. We honor alumni who reached their lofty goals with grit, determination, and the spirit of the University of North Dakota that they carry with them always. Tonight, these individuals join a celebrated group of more than 450 who have received this honor since its inception in 1949. I now invite all previous Sioux Award recipients with us here tonight to please stand and be recognized. You each are shining examples of what can be accomplished with a UND diploma in hand, and we are very proud to call each of you honored guests. Now it is my pleasure to welcome UND President Dr. Robert Kelly to the stage. Dr. Kelly has done so much during his time here to create a truly exceptional university, and you can see the results in our vibrant campus and the successful graduates. Ladies and gentlemen, President Kelly. Thank you, Deanna. It is always a wonderful opportunity for a president during homecoming week to welcome home alumni to the university. This is your week. This is your university. This is your night. One of the things that we talk about, uh, about an exceptional university, exceptional UND, is the distinction that is brought to the university by the outcomes of our graduates. And tonight we honor the best of the best. Tonight we are going to recognize distinction, achievement, all of which comes back to contribute to the exceptional nature of this wonderful university. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for continuing to support UND and congratulations to all of the honorees this evening for the distinction and the honor that you bring back to your alma mater. Thank you for being with us. Thank you, President Kelly. The Young Alumni Achievement Award was established in 2002 to recognize recent graduates of UND who have made a mark in the short time since they walked the campus as students. The Young Alumni Achievement recipients can be real role models for those who follow them on this campus. They show that success can come to those with a focus, a drive, and a willingness to work hard. Please welcome our Chief Relations Officer, Don Koich, to the stage to introduce this year's Young Alumni Achievement Award recipients. Don? Thank you, Deanna. It is my honor tonight 
to present the 2014 Young Alumni Achievement Award recipients. First up is a young man who made connections while still a student at the University of North Dakota that led directly to a successful career in sales. Jonathan Wary came to UND in the early 90s and soon realized his plan to major in accounting was not going to work because he wasn't that fond of the coursework. And I, for one, can understand that. I went there once. Instead, his advisor guided him through the process of getting his marketing degree. Dr. Denny Elbert, a professor of marketing at the time, introduced Jonathan to UND alumnus Gary Marston, co-founder of a business technology company, Marco Inc. Through that connection, Jonathan went to work for Marco after graduating in 1996. By 2012, Jonathan had been named the company's vice president of sales. Last year, Jonathan and his wife, Amy, also a 1996 grad, established the Jonathan and Amy Weary Family Endowment, which will provide a scholarship to marketing students in the College of Business and Public Administration. Preference is given to those pursuing sales careers. Jonathan says many students aren't aware of how great a career in sales can be, so he and Amy want to reward a student who takes that career path. Jonathan is a longtime board member and classroom volunteer for Junior Achievement and earned the organization's 2010 International Service Award. He is also a Great America Dealer Council member, past co-chair of Martin's Lutheran Capital Campaign, a park director in Castleton, North Dakota, treasurer of the Castleton Heritage Center, and a youth football and basketball coach. I don't know where you find the time. He and Amy are active contributors to the United Way and Churches United for the Homeless. Jonathan also volunteers in UND classrooms to share his story and knowledge with current students. Jonathan, for your success as a sales professional and your dedication to students and the University of North Dakota, Please come forward to accept your Young Alumni Achievement Award. Well, I want to thank the UND Alumni Association, but it's not why you might think. Up until very recently, they had me down as a 1999 graduate. And uh, I don't think they know I was a 96 graduate when I'm 40. I don't even think I'm eligible for this award. <laughs> But you can't have it back because it's really cool. Um, I just want to take a couple minutes and acknowledge some people in my life who've been important and helped me on my path to today. And I'm going to start at my career at UND. And uh, it was mentioned in the video, one of the first people that took a sincere interest in my experience here was my academic advisor, Judy Yonke. And she got to know me personally and connected, uh, connected me to some people, but Judy's still an advisor here and does an incredible job because she gets to know the students' goals. And she knew I was struggling with the coursework in accounting. That was a kind way to put it, by the way. Um, and helped me with my major path and said, you got to talk to Denny. And I did not know who Denny was. In fact, I didn't know professors even had first names at that time. <laughs> and, and she connected me to Dr. Albert. And, and uh, he provided me with some coaching around academics, career opportunities, and just life in general. And I got to participate in his retirement ceremony a few months back, and I was very honored to do that because that man's impacted hundreds of people, both on the university and, and abroad. And uh, he, he connected me to the founder of Marco, Gary Marston, who 19 years ago, about this time, uh, interviewed me in Dr. Albert's office because I was paranoid about getting a job upon graduation. And uh, Gary took a chance on me, invested in me, um, and I want to thank Gary for doing that, uh, but he also created a company in Marco that has a culture of transparency, quality, and employee ownership. And Gary was a recipient of the 2011 Sioux Award. He's been active with UND for almost 50 years, so well-deserved. And 12 years prior to connecting with me, he connected with our current CEO, uh, and my friend Jeff Gao, who in Dr. Albert's classroom. So you can see that connection there. And simply put, Jeff has uh, mentored me as much as one person could impact 
another person in their life. And uh, he calls me every morning at 6.45 and to either talk about life, business, and for those of you that know Jeff, I mostly listen. Um, <laughs> and, but it's, a, it's, a, it's fascinating. He's a neat guy. He's helped me a ton. He's led our company to new heights. He's helped create great careers for a lot of people, myself included. Um, and behind Jeff is his wife, Cheryl, um, who gave me some great parenting advice uh, when I thought I knew what I was doing, and I clearly didn't, and it's made all the difference in the world, so thank you, Cheryl. Um, to my parents, who are educated and humble people, who gave me a great upbringing in the small town of Castleton, they sacrificed a lot to give my sisters, Vicki and Jackie and me, a good life. <clears throat> and they'll often say, with sincerity, my mom especially says, we didn't know what the hell we were doing. <laughs> and I can't believe how our kids turned out. She says that a lot. And so I can only tell them, you know, it's a thousand little choices they made along the way. And I just tell them to look in the mirror. Uh, to my friends and colleagues here tonight, um, thanks for never being afraid to bust my chops, keep me grounded. Um, Rotors, Lanny, Tope, Jay, Melissa, Megan, Jackie, Vicki, and others, you make me laugh and I enjoy that you're in my life. Um, to my kids, Grace and Owen, thanks for making me proud by trying your best and by treating other people well. I love being your dad and watching you grow up. Your mom and I have already submitted an application to UND on your behalf, <laughs> but we, we don't care where you go to college. I want to thank Judy for getting Grace into Western Civilization class 2019, fall semester. Thank you for doing that. You're the best, Judy. <clears throat> to my wife, Amy, thanks for your love, your consistency, and the sacrifices you make for me and our family. And I especially appreciate the fact that when you told me we were moving from St. Cloud back to Castleton in 2009, you let me come with. It was a bold move, and it's been totally awesome. Just a few things I've learned on my path in life, um, and there's a theme that you'll hear throughout the night, but you know, connect with good people, be mentorable, and be loyal. And uh, UND gives us an opportunity. I think it's probably the best public university in the country at creating a sense of community and loyalty. Um, and it does a lot better than private colleges as well. But um, I encourage you to give back, whether it be financially. You all know a lot of stuff. You should be sharing it with other people. And UND gives you a chance to do that, whether that be classroom participation, advisory boards. So I'd encourage you to do that. And uh, I, wanna, I do want to say thanks for the Young Alumni Award. Um, my daughter says 40 is too old to get it, but I thank you, <laughs> university, for disagreeing. Thank you. Congratulations, Jonathan, again. You are a very deserving recipient of our Young Alumni Achievement Award. Our next recipients captured the world's attention at the 2010 Winter Olympics in Vancouver, but people in Grand Forks already knew all about the hockey skills of the Lamaru twins. Monique and Jocelyn grew up in a hockey family with brothers who didn't take it easy on their sisters while on the ice. Or was it really the other way around? Monique and Jocelyn played prep hockey for Shattuck St. Mary's, and after one year with the Minnesota Golden Gophers, they transferred to their father's alma mater, UND. Their presence immediately elevated the fledgling women's program at UND. They took a team that was at the bottom of the WCHA to a national contender that now attracts top talent from around the world. Jocelyn and Monique both excelled in the classroom as well. Even while they attended the 2010 Olympics, they remained full-time students. They completed their bachelor's degrees in exercise science in 2012. Jocelyn has completed her master's degree and Monique is finishing up her final coursework to also get a master's. In addition to winning Olympic silver medals with the USA women's hockey team in 2010 and 2014, the twins have represented their country in many international competitions, winning a gold medal at the 2009 World Women's Championship. They hope to again wear the Team USA jersey for the 2018 Olympics in Pyeongchang, South Korea. Monique is currently the camp director and CEO of Lamru Hockey, a family venture based in Grand Forks that hosted its first camp this year. Lamru Hockey's goal is to provide quality coaching and camps for youngsters in North Dakota and Northwestern Minnesota. 
Jocelyn began a position at, say, at All True Sports Medicine Department as a performance enhancement specialist in May, where she's putting her UND education to good use. Also this year, Jocelyn married Brent Davidson, a former UND hockey player and 2011 graduate. Jocelyn and Monique for proudly representing Grand Forks, the University of North Dakota, and your country, and for being role models to young people on the ice and in the classroom, please come forward to accept your Young Alumni Achievement Awards. Uh, when we got the email about our speeches, they said four to five minutes. We weren't sure if that was for both of us, so we'll split the difference and put it about eight minutes if that's okay, guys. Um, as everybody knows, we're from Grand Forks, and growing up, our goal was to play on the men's hockey team. Obviously, that wasn't going to happen, and eventually they got the women's team, and we got it right the second time around when we transferred. But uh, first, I'd like... Oh. Uh, we'd like to congratulate uh, the other award winners tonight. Uh, it's quite an honor to be up here with you guys, and uh, it's pretty special for us and a pretty special award for us to get. Um, the way I would like to add a few stories. Um, so when we first came to campus our sophomore year, the beginning of the season, uh, Peter Elander, he was a two-time Olympic coach for Team Sweden for the women's hockey team. Uh, he asked Jocelyn and I to go, go out to coffee with him, and we figured he'd just ask us questions, uh, get, get to know us as players, as people, uh, what the differences between us were, and uh, the one thing he said when we sat down was, what can I do to make you guys the best players in the world? And it wasn't what he thought we could do, what he thought we needed to do to do that, it was what could he do to help, and so he to me, right away, learned he put his ego aside, put all of his experience and everything aside to learn what he needed to learn or do what he needed to do to help us get to where we wanted to go. Uh, and then as far as in the classroom, I know Sandra Short uh, is here tonight. She has been an advisor for us uh, the past couple of years. And it's probably not too often your professor, uh, when your students go up to your professor and say, give you a list of about six weeks of the year you're going to be gone on top of the many days you missed with the college team or the suit when we were playing when we were playing and so if it wasn't for Sandra and the professors in the exercise exercise science department there's no way we would have been able to keep up with the course though let us hand in things online from overseas or whatever it may be um, but the biggest thing that I've learned with the people and the coaches the professors faculty, staff, whatever it may be, UND has surrounded itself with the best at what they do. And I've learned that in order to become a master of your craft, you must always be a student of your craft. And to always see that and be led by examples from your coaches and your professors, it's allowed us to be the best at what we do and be, really master our craft and learn our craft. And, Thank you for allowing us to do that. If it wasn't for North Dakota, I don't think we'd be quite as accomplished as we are, and we really appreciate it. Thank you. So everything she said, and um, I'd like to thank, um, there's a long list, and. I guess with our family, that's a long list too, but all my brothers, Jacques, your Paul, Phil, Mario, only one of them's here tonight, but never taking it easy on us, always pushing us to be better. My parents, uh, mom is uh, quite the spirit finger coach, I guess you could say, and then my dad always taught us the game, but the most important part I've learned is um, Part of playing on a team is so much what you do in real life, and as I've started my very short career um, away from hockey, it's the life lessons I've learned from playing and playing with teams and working with teammates, and so I'm very grateful for all the lessons I've learned from my parents. Um, very grateful for them accidentally having six kids. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Monique and I snuck right in there, so. Um, 
But uh, on top of thanking, you know, professors and coaches, um, we, we grew up literally, it's like a five minute walk from here, uh, just down the road at my parents' house. And Grand Forks and UND is one and the same for us. It's a community that's based around the university and we're so lucky to have grown up with that influence. And um, I wasn't gonna bring up transferring because a lot of people don't even know we played at Minnesota, but <laughs> since it already got brought up, um, I just like to share that the reason we came back was from one simple question and it was uh, if you won a national championship with Minnesota or for the Fighting Sioux, what would mean more? And this is when we were at Minnesota and I was like, oh yeah, Fighting Sioux for sure. <laughs> and so just from that simple question, uh, I got the wheels turning and I'm very grateful, um, you know, just because it was a general conversation and, you know, now we're back here and I wouldn't change it for anything and it's been very special playing for the University of North Dakota, sharing our dreams with each other. Uh, we've had a unique journey compared to anyone else just because we're twins and we've been able to do everything together and so I'll thank Monique, <laughs> thank too. Um, and then uh, Brent, my husband, he's right over there, um, thank you for uh, asking my brother Mario. He played with my brothers Mario and Phil and so he has permission to date me his senior year so I'm glad that all worked out too. <laughs> but the University of North Dakota has been, it's a family. Um, we're so lucky and we have so many people that have influenced influence us, that influenced us and my grandma always said my grandma Ian is right over there. To whom much is given, much is expected. And so many people in this room and a lot of people that aren't here have supported us throughout our entire journey. And if it wasn't for all the support, uh, we wouldn't be here and we wouldn't be standing here with the accomplishments um, that we have. And we play a team sport. You never expect to get individual awards. It's just, I don't know, you, you show up with 20 players and 18 teammates and it's, you know, you just, it's, not on the list of things that you're trying to do and so we're very appreciative so thank you everyone uh, congratulations to the other recipients and the alumni association thanks congratulations jocelyn monique and jonathan the three of you are very deserving recipients of our young alumni achievement award at this time, we would like to invite all of our past Young Alumni Achievement Award recipients, if we have others here, to please stand and be recognized as well. And Monique, Jocelyn, Jonathan, you can stand up too, so we can applaud you again. Any others? <laughs> you have truly made the University of North Dakota very proud of you. As we prepare to eat our meal, please welcome Pastor Kathy Fick of Christus Rex Lutheran Campus Ministry for our invocation. Pastor Fick. This is an evening for celebration. We've come to honor Marlis and Jim and Keith and Jonathan and Monique and Jocelyn. On this night, we give thanks for these lives well lived, and so let us pray. We give thanks for inquisitive minds and generous hearts, and for a university that nurtures and encourages their growth. We give thanks both for the sweetness of memory and the exhilaration of expectation, for the accomplishments that we have known and the wonders that lie ahead. We give thanks for one another, for differences which complement and challenge, and for support which enriches and sustains. We give thanks for those who have gone before us, whose memories and lives we remember and cherish. And we give thanks for friends next to us and around the world whose lives enrich our own. 
We give thanks for this moment of joy, for God's continuing love, for all the mercies which go before us and follow after us. We give thanks this night for the food before us, even as we remember the call to be bread for those who have no food. As we eat and drink and celebrate these special alumni, remind us, God, of your invitation to each of us to fully live the gifts that are ours. With hearts of gratitude and joy, we offer our prayer this night in the name of the one who showed us love. Amen. Enjoy your meal. Ladies and gentlemen, as you continue your dinner, please enjoy the Varsity Bars of the University of North Dakota under the direction of Jonathan Bromfman. <laughs> Do you fear the force of the wind, the slash of the rain? Go face them and fight them. Be savage, be savage again. Go hungry and cold like the wolf. Go hungry and cold like the wolf. Go hungry and cold like the wolf. Go away like the crane. Like the crane. Go Your cheek will tan, you'll go ragged, you'll go weary, you'll go ragged and swarthy, but you'll walk, but you'll walk, you'll walk like a young man. Thank you. 
That was uh, Dr. Wesley Lawrence, one of the voice teachers in the music department. Um, also, Dr. Lawrence won uh, an award last year uh, for uh, excellence in undergraduate teaching that was provided, that's provided by the Alumni Association. We're grateful for Dr. Lawrence and the association for that. Ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to extend a big thank you to the young men of the Varsity Bars under the direction of Dr. Joshua Bronfman. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back to the stage, Deanna Carlson Zink. Scores of our UND graduates have chosen to dedicate themselves to public service. For example, North Dakota U.S. Senator Heidi Heitkamp is an alum. The current longest continuously serving legislator in North Dakota is Ray Holmberg, a 1965 graduate who earned two master's degrees from UND as well. North Dakota Representative Kylie Overson was the youngest female state legislator in the country when she took office in 2013. She is currently a law student at UND. Kurt Zellers was Speaker of the Minnesota House from 2011 to 2013 and ran a gubernatorial campaign this year. And our next speaker has gone from a career as a federal prosecutor to serving North Dakota as its Lieutenant Governor. Drew Wrigley was so impressed by his attendance at a recent Sioux Awards banquet that he has vowed to attend whenever his schedule allows. He is here tonight and I'd like to call on our Lieutenant Governor to say a few words. Drew? Well, I'm just glad to be here this year without my crutches. It's good to see everybody. And uh, I'm a little nervous. I've got to be honest with you. I was, uh, I was sitting, I'm sitting over with, uh, with Bruce and Ann and the great table over there and my, uh, my great friends Diane and Stephanie Odegaard. And Steph has the vegan meal tonight, and I've got a nice steak sitting there. So I, I left my steak, and Steph is, like, chomping on my steak. I know it. <laughs> vegan meal? We were in school together a lot of years ago. She wasn't eating vegan meals, so I don't know what's going on there. It's good to see everybody. I, uh, I see these teleprompters here. I am, it says, Drew Speaks, and that's where it ends, because when you're the lieutenant governor of North Dakota, your official speechwriter <laughs> is your kid's crayons and whatever paper you can scratch together. I'm going to take a couple minutes. I, I want to point out there's so many things happening at homecoming, and it's so great to be back with everybody. I was here earlier today, we were over at the Odegaard School for an absolutely incredible uh, announcement and groundbreaking uh, for the new facility over there for UAS and, and other uh, uh, classes and, and labs and everything else associated with that great school. And it was incredible, but there were a lot of things incredible about it. It took a long time, I'm not going to synopsize it for you, except this. Uh, one of the main donors, and there were several, but several of the main donors fall into a category of people who didn't even share our lineage with this great university. They didn't go to school here. Senator Hoven was nudging me. He kept saying, what's his connection here? The Cy Robbins was up there. He said, what's his connection? Did he go to school here? No, I said, he didn't, John. Does he have a kid who went to school here? I said, John, he doesn't. 
There must be something, he kept saying. Then then Sai's telling us, well, I flew over North Dakota a lot of times, he said, but I never... I kept telling him, Senator, if you listen to the speech, he's going to tell you this. But he does have a connection with Bruce, and he has a, a connection with the leadership and the faculty and the students of the school, and he has a connection uh, to John Odegaard in, in that he loves aviation and sees it as such an, an important part of our future. We were there, I was asked to speak because of the challenge grant, and I just want to, I just, well, what I want to do is make fun of my friend Tim O'Keefe, but I'm going to thank my friend Tim O'Keefe, because <laughs> I had never heard of the challenge grant until a couple of years ago, when Tim, uh, today at the at gathering, Tim wasn't able to be there, right? said that Tim and, and Deanna put me in the arm bar a couple of years ago and wouldn't release it until I said, I'll go back to Bismarck and do what I can to try to help you guys get this challenge grant program through. Long story short, public-private partnership that is benefiting all of higher education in North Dakota, every single, single campus. In fact, you know, probably benefiting the smaller campuses more than the large, even though there's more money in the pools for the large, because it, it's igniting public-private partnerships and giving to the universities and to their mission. So Cy Robbins, who had been flying over North Dakota for a lot of years, fell in love with the Odegaard School, the leadership there, the energy and the faculty, the energy of our state, the faculty, and the students. And it was really remarkable to have a chance to talk with him today. I presented uh, Bruce and, and the school with uh, a stolen license plate. Uh, the governor had a bunch of North Dakota 125th license plates uh, printed up this year. And then he, I said he goes around the state and he signs them and he makes people happy. So I stole some, and I signed a couple. And I... Uh, <laughs> It's like, who cares? It's from the lieutenant governor. <laughs> I know, I know. They're all going to be on eBay. <laughs> Bit them up, would you? Come on. Anyway, I, uh, so I gave him the North. It says ND125, but I signed it to the leadership, faculty, and students of the John D. Odegaard School. Always reaching for the horizon. Always pioneers. And that is one of dozens, scores of stories all across higher education because of what was envisioned here at this university, the Challenge Grant Program. Tim O'Keefe, Deanna, so many people in our foundation coming up with the idea. I know you realize we can't just have it for UND. That would have been good, though. That, if we could have gotten that through, that would have been impressive politics. I often say in my speeches, and I promise you mine's about to wrap up, because I'm not on the teleprompter. I often refer to North Dakota as the greatest state in the finest nation on the face of the earth. And deep down we all nod because, you know, I know that's maybe not that modest, but it's true. I believe that. I believe that the history of North Dakota, when you look around and you read and you talk to people about the stories, the history of North Dakota and the people in this room, the work that goes on today, speaks to a dynamic in this state that has been added. We have a lot of great things going for us. And one of the gems is the University of North Dakota. It's a special place that I feel blessed to have come through here. My dad went to school here. My little sister went to school here. Some uncles went to school here. I made some of the best friends in my life here. To be involved in the Challenge Grant program the last couple of years has made me probably more proud of the school than I was even just as an alum. I'm going to read you something, an email I got the other day after we had our Challenge Grant, pro we had our meeting where the grants came in from the schools around the state of North Dakota. And this email came in from the president of Williston State. He sent me a note, and I'm a politician with incredible power and prestige the lieutenant governor of the whole state of North Dakota. So, <laughs> so the first, you know, first couple lines are just about how great I am, and I won't read those. <laughs> he says a couple of things, and he says, Drew, Williston State, as a result of the match they had at just our meeting just, just two days ago, Williston State 
will now be able to offer a full scholarship to every high school graduate in Williams County. That's how somebody delineated their gift that was then matched by the state through the match program. And we have scholarships, you know, endowments for professors and scholarships for students and programs coming through every one of those meetings that we have. And I'm known as a pretty conservative person, but I can't wait until we've given out every nickel of the $30 million that the state of North Dakota has put out to match $60 million from private donors all across the United States. It is an incredible gift. It started here at the University of North Dakota. So God bless all of you and everything that you're doing. God bless the University of North Dakota. Happy homecoming. It's great to be home. It's great to be with friends. Thanks. Thank you, Drew. Your passion for this university is evident at all times. And I would say the finest state in the country has the finest lieutenant governor in the country, who is a UND grad. And one more thing, Drew, if I remember correctly, isn't tomorrow your birthday? Truth be told, I think he just wanted another big birthday party. That's why he comes back for homecoming. But, but like Drew, this is a night that I look forward to every homecoming. Honoring our most successful graduates and hearing them talk about what UND has meant to them is so inspiring. Three years ago, we came up with a sponsor a student component so that students could find inspiration from our alumni as well. We have been pleasantly surprised by the response from our alumni and friends to sponsor student attendance. And this year, we have more than 50 students here tonight thanks to your sponsorship. So I'd like to ask the students in attendance to stand and be recognized tonight. And there is also a special group of student leaders here tonight that also deserve recognition. The Student Ambassador Executive Board plans student homecoming activities, welcome and family weekends, and also Spirit Week. Student board members have spent a lot of time since they got back to school in August getting ready for this week. So would the student ambassadors who are here tonight please stand so we can recognize and thank you for your dedication. So now it's time to pay tribute to this year's Sioux Award recipients. Please welcome Dan Muse, our Chief Development Officer for the UND Alumni Association and Foundation, to the stage to honor tonight's Sioux Award recipients. Thank you, Deanna. Um, you know, I've listened to Lieutenant Governor Wrigley speaks several times uh, over the last several years, and um, I'm always in awe uh, listening to you, Drew. Um, the emotion you evoke, um, it, it, it's palpable, and uh, I remember the last time I watched you speak, uh, I leaned over to the person next to you, or next to me, excuse me, and said, uh, whatever you do, don't ever be the person who speaks after Drew Wrigley. <laughs> it's a terrible place to be. Uh, you'll never get them back after that. But uh, so again, thank you, Deanna. <clears throat> uh, good evening, everyone. It is my pleasure to honor tonight's Sioux Award recipients. Our first award winner is Dr. Marlis Shu, who has not only distinguished herself as a first-rate oncologist, but as a humanitarian and philanthropist as well. Dr. Shu has dedicated her professional life to battling breast cancer and helping her patients cope with the disease and its emotional and financial impacts. In 1999, Marlis established the St. Louis Cancer and Breast Institute with a group of six other physicians. In her practice, she noticed that some women were not getting the benefit of early detection and comprehensive care. In order to help, she co-founded the Gateway to Hope Foundation in St. Louis. The foundation helps patients who are in financial need, non-insured or underinsured, and assures they'll receive medical care they need. 
volunteer nurse coordinators help guide the women through their care, and many health care centers in St. Louis area donate services, equipment, and supplies to the Gateway to Hope. Marlis also saw another need among her patients. She founded the St. Louis Cancer Foundation, a charity that helps women in remission with things like advice on nutrition and exercise. Dr. Shu grew up in Lakota, North Dakota, and played softball at UND. She credits her North Dakota roots and her time at UND for giving her the value system she has based her career and her charitable efforts on. When Marlis realized that there were so many women who had breast cancer and no insurance and no way of paying for it, she co-founded the nonprofit Gateway to Hope. And it's through this nonprofit that she makes sure that women who don't have a means to pay for their treatment can get it. She has really um, capitalized on her education to make a huge difference in the St. Louis community. The diagnosis of breast cancer is very complex and very difficult and she said herself that she is a listener and a partner on the journey um, in addressing cancer. UND is a lot like Marlis, rock solid, looking at what needs to be done and not aware that there are any limits. Well, I was inspired, really, by Dr. Shu. I was looking forward to meeting her. I had the chance to go to St. Louis and visit her in her clinic um, and to see what a wonderful place it is, what a healing place it is. And it really motivates me to continue to do what we do at the School of Medicine and Health Sciences so that we can give the right education and experiences to develop individuals like Dr. Shu who can go out and make an impact on society. Dr. Marla Shu, for being an expert in the detection and treatment of breast cancer 
and for starting not one, but two charities to help patients cope with this disease. Please come forward and accept your much deserved Sue Award. Well, thank you for the amazing introduction. And I was so surprised when I got the call, and I was so thrilled to be honored by the Alumni Association with the Sue Award. And to me, it's huge. I consider myself very fortunate, um, really from the very beginning, because talk about luck of birth. I was born into a loving, caring, nuts and bolts North Dakota family. I mean, upbringing doesn't come any better than that. And we were always encouraged, whether it was trying to get the training wheels off the bike, and literally from then on all the way through medical school. I never really thought about going to college, but with an older brother and sister who went to college ahead of me, it seemed pretty, pretty natural thing. I followed my sister here to UND. My brother went to NDSU, but we don't hold that against him anymore. <laughs> and UND was, was a wonderful fit for me. I also, my undergraduate degree was in medical technology, and I can still see Gene Somnier going, you keep your nose to the grindstone. And for the most part, we did. But as you heard the varsity bards and before, there's a lot of activities at the university, some of which are the sporting events, and certainly hockey in the old barn was great fun. And there's other university-sponsored events. And we also partook in some university non-sanctioned events, shall I say. <laughs> but we'll leave those skeletons in the closet. And for the most part, we kept our nose to the grindstone. And I came away with a wonderful education, a degree, a profession and obviously broader horizons. And I think that's partly what prompted me to, to go on to medical school. And obviously, as you've heard from the, the wonderful introduction, it was, a, it was a great fit for me. When I started in medical school here, the university was in a system of transition for the medical school where the two years of basic science had been here for many, many years. And it was just transitioning into the four-year school. So some of us still transferred to other schools. And at that time, I chose to transfer to Washington University. And I must say, it was with uh, a lot of trepidation to go to a bigger city, a bigger school. You never knew how you were going to stack up. But I must say, I needn't have worried, because my basic science foundation that I got here at UND made the transition almost seamless. So it was a, a wonderful background. And I've also been incredibly fortunate to have a career that has allowed me to fit a, a career that fits me well, is what I mean to say. I'm able to help people. It's incredibly gratifying to help women and their families with breast cancer, so I'm very privileged from that standpoint. And also professionally, it's incredibly gratifying to work with my colleagues. And also with not-for-profits, those women and their families are so incredibly grateful that I really feel it a responsibility that, that I need to do that. And so to come full circle, I want to thank my family, my friends, my partner for all the support, understanding that they've shown me all these years to help me along this way. And lastly, I need to thank UND beyond the Educational Foundation, which was really the, the bedrock. But when I was applying to or thinking about going to medical school, they showed me really an individualized and personal attention to help facilitate my application. And when I look back on it, I think if they hadn't done that, I'm not sure I would have gone to medical school. And for me, that would have been, I think, a huge mistake. So I owe UND several debts of gratitude. And so to receive this award is an incredible honor for me. Thank you. Our next award recipient found success in the Red River Valley, working in the family business. But Jim Williams almost got lured away by the excitement of New York City. Jim graduated from UND in 1962, and at the urging of his father to see the world, he enrolled in graduate school in Pennsylvania, then went to work uh, in New York City. He, only lived, he not only lived an exciting life in the in Big Apple, but he also went on active duty with the Air Force after enrolling in the Delaware Air National Guard. Jim took a six-month leave in 1968 to work on Richard Nixon's presidential campaign. He traveled around the country with Nixon's two daughters, Trisha and Julie, 
Julie's fiance and Julie's fiance at the time, David Eisenhower, grandson of Dwight Eisenhower. Jim was offered a job in Washington after the 1968 campaign, but chose to return to his position as an assistant treasurer at the Bank of New York. He stayed there until a fateful trip home to North Dakota in 1971. Jim went on a walk with his father, who told him it was time to make a decision about whether he wanted to, become, wanted to come back to Arthur and join the family business. At the time, Jim still wanted to live and work in New York. But he says, quote, I guess my heart was still in North Dakota, end quote. He was about to marry fellow UND grad Barbara Wood, and he didn't want to raise a family in New York. Jim moved back in 1972 and married Barbara the next year. Back in Arthur, Jim threw himself into the family business. It had started in 1890 when Jim's grandfather and great uncle opened a mercantile store. Jim became president of two farm equipment businesses that were merged into Titan Machinery in 2009. He also became more active and involved in the family banking interests and currently serves as the chairman of both First State Bank of North Dakota and Goose River Bank. Jim says joining the UND Alumni Association and Foundation Board of Directors in 2003 was an eye-opener. He began to understand just how much work was being done by the organization to secure a strong future for students, faculty, and the institution. His connection to UND grew even stronger when he served on the steering committee for the North Dakota Spirit Campaign, the successful $324 million campaign that ended last year at homecoming. Jim's sister, Jane Christofferson, and her husband, Lee, couldn't be here tonight. But she passed along a letter, which we'll give to Jim. In it, Jane says, quote, Jim and cousins John Williams and Rick Burgum have been instrumental in the effort to keep Arthur a thriving community when so many small towns have deteriorated. I think this is one of his biggest accomplishments, along with his business success and his hardworking support for UND. Lee and I cannot think of anyone more deserving of the Sioux Award. Jim is a very quiet philanthropist. However, Jimmy at the same time is very determined to make a difference. Jim, in his own way, encourages others to give of their time as well as their financial resources to help uh, the community uh, and help our society. It takes management skills, it takes leadership, uh, things that, that Jim has uh, plenty of and uh, I'm sure he learned a lot of it at UND.
I think Jim is most deserving of it, and I'm very proud of him. I've known Jim uh, for over 55 years. We met, in fact, at the university when we were both freshmen. Uh, Jim has given me very good advice and counsel over many, many years, and for that I'm most thankful. Jim, we could not be happier that you chose a life in North Dakota over the big city. For all that you've done to advance this great institution, to nurture, nurture its students, support its faculty, please come forward to accept your much-deserved Sioux Award. Well, don't be alarmed. Uh, Drew Wrigley had more on those two little sheets of paper than I have on these big ones. So. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> President Kelly, uh, Dan, Deanna, Dean Williams, um, and to all of you involved in this process, I'm truly honored and humbled. And I offer my congratulations to the recipients, other recipients of the Sioux Award, and the recipients of the Young Alumni Achievement Awards. Um, so anyway, I've been instructed to limit my remarks to three to five minutes. And if I go over that, I have a couple of cousins here that have probably figured out a way to cut off the speakers. So I'll be, I'll be short, fairly short anyway. When Deanna called me this spring to tell me I'd been nominated and approved to receive the award, I was pretty certain that she had uh, probably dialed the wrong number. But before she had a chance to um, figure it out, I accepted. <laughs> so anyway, apparently it wasn't a mistake, and although I'm certain there are many graduates that are more deserving, I'm very proud to be standing here tonight to receive this award. Family and friends have always and continue to be important to me, and a good part of the reason that I'm up here tonight. My wife, Barbara, who's also a 62 graduate uh, and has put up with me for 41 years and has been a great influence. And Barbara, it's kind of dark here, but anyway, I think you ought to be stand and be recognized. She, Barbara's been a great partner. Um, and by the way, she didn't write this, I did. So. <laughs> We have uh, one son, James III, and his wife, Kristen, and I'm very proud of them. And they've blessed us with uh, three wonderful grandchildren. If you've noticed some activity over here tonight, it's, it's sort of those grandchildren, which, which is great. There's uh, Claire and Vivian and James IV, and we're, we're very proud of them. I also have two wonderful sisters, Mary, and her husband, Jack Fowler, who are also with us here tonight, and uh, my sister Jane and her husband, Lee Christofferson, and actually they're traveling in Europe, but you did hear some uh, part of a letter that she apparently somehow or other got to the appropriate people. Anyway, uh, they're, they've been wonderful sisters, and I've got two wonderful brother-in-laws also. Um, also here tonight are a couple of my uh, cousins, that you heard about, John Williams and Rick Burgum and his wife, Jody. And Rick has uh, his son and daughter and son-in-law here tonight also. We were raised in Arthur. Uh, we all graduated from UND and we continue to be business partners. Our parents and grandparents were hard workers uh, and still that work ethic and our faith in each of us, and they were strong believers in education. We also have several good friends here tonight, and I'm very appreciative of their attendance. Just a few comments about the Alumni Association and Foundation and about how the experience of being on that board reconnected me, really reconnected me to UND. Shortly after uh, Tim O'Keefe became uh, president 
uh, or CEO actually of the Association Foundation, he called and asked if he could come down to Arthur for a visit. <clears throat> now I'd made some very nominal contributions to the foundation in the past and I fully expected that was the reason for his visit. He wanted to raise some money. Well, I was quite surprised when he asked if I would consider uh, would be interested in serving on the board of the Foundation and Alumni Association. Frankly, I wasn't exactly sure uh, what all the Alumni Association Foundation does and what they mean to UND. So, you know, we had a, a pretty extensive visit and t you know, Tim was quite new at the time and I started asking him some questions and once in a while he'd say, you know, I really got to check that out. I'm, you know, I don't remember exactly. <laughs> Or can't, I'm so new that I don't know all the ropes yet. But anyway, we, um, you know, I accepted the offer. And I must say, serving on that board for nine years and on the campaign steering committee are two of the best decisions I've ever made. Not only did it reconnect me to UND, but I soon discovered how important the Alumni Association Foundation are to UND and its future. And I discovered that it's more than about raising money, which of course is very important, but it also about relationships between the alumni and administration and faculty, contacts in every imaginable field, politics, friendship, et cetera. The list goes on. The point is that the Alumni Association and Foundation have uh, really um, become such an important part of the university and their importance, will, their importance will only increase as we have to rely more and more on private support and less and less on public support. First, I can't, again, you've heard it before, but I can't forget to mention the capital campaign. What a success story. When we first started talking about such an endeavor, a lot of people thought we were crazy. Well, we had great leadership in Linda Pankratz and John Barry and a very efficient and hardworking staff put together by Tim O'Keefe and Deanna Carlson Zink. The rest is history, $324 million and stay tuned. I think there's probably more to come. Tim and, Tim and now Deanna have put together a wonderful organization and have had so many successes and have developed a great working relationship with President Kelly and his administration. And I've had the privilege of being a witness and a part of most of it over the past decade. So my message is continue to support this wonderful institution as it moves from great to exceptional. It can only do so with our continued support. Thank you very much. Well, if you enjoy getting a can of Starbucks Double Shot from your local convenience store, you can thank our final Sioux Award winner. That product was developed while Keith Reimer was the head of North American Coffee Partnership, a venture launched by PepsiCo and Starbucks. The ready-to-drink coffee business now generates approximately a billion dollars a year in the United States. After working for General Foods, the Hamden, North Dakota native spent the rest of his career in the soft drink industry. Recently retiring as president and CEO of Pepsi Bottling Ventures, the largest privately held Pepsi Cola bottler in North America. Keith says throughout his 30 year career, he wanted an organization that was valued, motivated, capable, and accountable. His advice for business success is to build a team that doesn't look and think exactly like you do. Instead, find diverse team members who challenge each other, respect one another, and can work well together. While he is technically retired, Keith sits on the board for Pepsi Bottling Ventures and serves as a board member, advisor, and consultant to other independently owned companies in the beverage industry. He and his wife, Stephanie, have been great supporters of UND. Keith served on the UND Alumni Association Board of Directors, including a term as chair from 2003 to 2011. The Rhymers traveled the country during Keith's career. Everywhere they lived, they got involved with local charities 
Helping kids has been a particular focus of their charitable efforts. Keith says he was shaped as a business leader and a person by the life, lessons, and work ethic his parents instilled in him. He built his professional career on the foundation of his experience at UND, not only from what he learned in the classroom, but also from his interactions with the people he met here, faculty, classmates, and his fraternity brothers at Kappa Sigma. During his time at UND, Keith already was displaying a lot of the qualities that I think made him a success later in his career and in his life. He was and, and continues to be just a really nice, warm, friendly person, very humble. You know, today it's all about business ethics and leadership and, and ethics and the fact that he was had those those core values coming out of uh, rural North Dakota through the university and as a phenomenally successful alum has continued to give back in many, many ways. Always a positive attitude. I think that's another thing that I really respect about Keith is that he very much had a can-do attitude. Through his actions, he has demonstrated that he's not interested just in himself. So I think he's a great example of passing it forward and forward meaning for the students of today. Like many of us, Keith came from relatively a humble background but he really took advantage of his time here to develop and grow and to prepare for life after the university. And obviously he continued that growth and development and achieved great things both in his career and his life. And I would hope that students would look at his story and the stories of other people and say, yes, I can do that. Keith, for all your professional achievements and your support of the University of North Dakota, please come forward and accept your well-deserved Sue Award. between you and a big post party, I guess, right? <clears throat>
Um, thank you, Dan, for that uh, very kind introduction. And I, I'd like to begin my remarks by uh, just identifying Deanna Carlson Zink. I got the phone call back in March, much like Jim did. I was on a ski slope on a cell phone, and I said, can I call you back later? The good news is when I called her back, she still offered the award. But I have to tell you, I am so pleased that uh, she has taken over the leadership mantle of the Alumni Association and Foundation. The board could not have found a more capable and caring leader than Deanna. And I know that she's going to do a great job building on a legacy that Tim O'Keefe built. And, you know, as long as I've been associated with the university, I don't think I could think of two other people that bleed more UND green than Tim and Deanna. So thank you for all you've done and all you do for this great school. I think we should give them a hand. You know, and I, I see Dave sitting out there, Dave Meadema. I'd be remiss if I didn't thank Dave as well because it was Dave who gave me the call back in 2003 and asked if I would be interested in joining the board of the University of North Dakota. And to this day, I, I still believe in doing so, that was one of the best life decisions I've ever made. Because like Jim, it reconnected me back to the university it reconnected me back to the state of the North Dakota, and it reconnected me back with many friends that frankly I'd lost touch with after living and working away from the area for over 30 years. And as importantly, the involvement with the board really allowed Stephanie and myself to meet and build friendships with some amazing people who all share this common bond with UND and many of you are in this room this evening. So to say that I'm humbled and honored to receive this award is an understatement. And for me to share the stage this evening with the accomplished individuals that you've already heard speak tonight makes this evening extra special for me. Um, having spent nine years as a board member, I think I have a pretty good appreciation for the caliber of people who've been given this award People whom I know and I admire, like Howard Dahl, like Tim Haas, like Carolyn B. Craft, like Greg Page, or like Dale Morrison, to name just a few. So for me, joining the company of these past Sioux Award winners really makes this even more humbling. Now, like me, I'm sure Many of you may have watched some of the recent PBS miniseries about the Roosevelts. I know some of it was a little quiet. You had to watch it before it got too late at night, but I thought it was very interesting. And I learned a lot about the Roosevelts and the many things that they did for our country. However, there's something that Teddy Roosevelt said that really hit home for me, and I quote, that had it not been for the years that I spent in North Dakota, I likely would have not ascended to the presidency, end of quote. Now, Teddy and I don't have a lot in common, other than maybe we both like to hunt birds. But I have to tell you, I, I do share a similar view, and that is that my small town, family upbringing, in tiny little Hamden, North Dakota, and my days spent as a student here at UND had a tremendously positive impact on my life, both professionally and personally. My North Dakota roots are embedded in my DNA. And fortunately, North Dakotans, as Mr. Burgum has taught me, know a thing or two about the importance of establishing good roots, whether they're agricultural in nature, or raising a family, or instilling a good, strong work ethic. So I'm truly grateful for the many small town lessons learned and all the people that have touched my life in North Dakota and for the great education I received at UND. But beyond academics, and there was a lot of beyond academics for me while I was here, <laughs> true confessions later, my student experience here at UND also helped me grow in many other ways, whether it was 
honing my social skills at the student union, or maybe at Frenchies, sometimes at the expense of my academics, or learning the importance of leadership and brotherhood as a Kappa Sigma, or establishing friendships for a lifetime. Now, UND was really the only school that I ever considered attending. My father may have played a role in that, in that he was a student here in the mid-1930s. And though he never had a chance to complete his degree, as his father passed away and he had to go home to take over a small family business, he remained a big supporter ever since. So I'm sure that both my mom and my dad are looking down from above tonight, and they're very proud. I'm also grateful that in, a, in an indirect way, my UND education led me to meet my wife, Stephanie. Now, following graduation, I received a phone call from a, fr from a fraternity brother of mine informing me of a job opportunity in Minneapolis, a sales position with General Foods Corporation, for which he also helped arrange an interview. Now, fortunately, I secured the position and started my professional career as a traveling salesman. And yes, you guessed it. Steph just happened to live in Rochester, Minnesota. That was in my sales territory, which is where we first met. Now, using my selling skills that I learned at UND and in my job, I was able to overcome her objections and convince her to marry me. Now, obviously, that's the best sale I've ever made. Now, our life together over the past 38 years has never been boring, with over 10 moves to all four corners of the country and places in between, raising three great kids that have all grown to be wonderful adult, adults. And now we're blessed with two great grandchildren whom we both cherish. So all, I owe much of my professional success to you, Stephanie, and for you know, while I was away managing businesses and organizations, she was at home and she was our rock managing the things that really are important, family, faith, and friends. So I'm indebted to you, sweetie. Love you. In closing, I also want to thank President Kelly and Marcia for all that you've done and continue to do for UND to lead and to raise the bar at this university. And while it seems like just yesterday that I was among the first to welcome you to UND, it's now been, I think, over seven years. But in that time, UND has taken major strides at fulfilling your vision of making this a truly exceptional university. Again, thank you for this great honor. Let's give another warm round of applause for our 2014 Sue Award and Young Alumni Award Achievement recipients. <laughs> Keith, Jim, Marlis, Monique, Jocelyn, and Jonathan, tonight you have joined a very select group of remarkable UND alumni and friends who are excellent examples of what a UND education and a North Dakota work ethic can accomplish. We are proud to call you alumni of this great University of North Dakota. I have to go off script a, just a little bit because President Kelly, Dean Williams, and I so thoroughly enjoyed Jim Williams' video. It had nothing to do with the video. It had to do with James IV narrating the entire video. So I don't know if you could hear it. I was tempted to bring a microphone over because at one point he goes, Papa, is that you? But the best was when I think it was the shot of Jim in the shorts on the boat. James IV goes, holy cow, Papa. <laughs> so that was very entertaining for us tonight. So before we close tonight, I would like to recognize and thank those who have given their time and talent and treasures as members of our UND Alumni Association and Foundation Board. 
um, and those who have also served on our very successful campaign committee. Would all board, former board, and campaign members please stand so we can thank you for your time and dedication on behalf of the University of North Dakota. I'd also like to recognize my predecessor, Tim O'Keefe, and his beautiful wife, Becky, and thank them for everything they helped establish here and for being here to celebrate this evening. So I would now like to invite you to take in all of the homecoming activities prior to Saturday's football game. Tomorrow at 1215, there will be a ceremony to mark the renovation and construction project at the UND School of Law, and I think Dean Rand is here in the audience tonight, and I know she'd love to have you there. The event will be held on the lawn of the Chester Fritz Library. And as probably most of you know, there's also a men's hockey game tomorrow night at the Ralph, so good luck Coach Hacksaw will be there cheering you on. We have the homecoming parade at 10 a.m. on Saturday, and you'll be pleased to know our Grand Marshal is the one and only Marilyn Haggerty. And then following the parade, there's a brunch at the Gretzky Alumni Center. Tiger Lily, a sister act from Hazen, North Dakota, will be providing the musical entertainment at the brunch. They are fantastic, and I hope you can be there to enjoy them and see them and visit with friends. Now, one more recognition um, before we close tonight. Um, Jim mentioned the great team that we have at the Alumni Association Foundation. This doesn't happen without a great team. Um, Spring Bakke, Brooke Conlon, they've been the ones who have choreographed tonight. I don't know where you are. You're probably hiding because you don't want any recognition. But they are fantastic. And our very own wizard behind the curtain, Milo Smith, he kept our teleprompter running all night. But our entire staff, could our staff stand up so we can thank you for all you do. So on behalf of all of us at the UND Alumni Association and Foundation, please do stay and enjoy the post-dinner reception, and we thank you so much for your attendance tonight. Travel safely, and good night. <laughs>